The Impact of Standardized Assessments in Education by Lindsay Brown. This is for English 686. Originally, this presentation was created on February 24th, 2024. Here's the rhetorical situation. Who is this presentation mainly for? It is for dis school district officials, school administration, which includes principals, assistant principals, in some cases, vice principals, and also teachers. Standardized assessments for decades have served as a cornerstone of modern education, poorly offering invaluable insights into guiding instructional practices and also measuring student growth and proficiency. Standardized assessments, they shape the educational landscape, they also create pedagogical approaches, and they also determine resource and funding, along with also having a huge impact among school administration, district officials, and educators. The goal of this study is to examine the ways educators, administrators, and school districts are impacted by standardized assessments in primary and secondary education. And I emphasize the state of Arizona. I'm not looking at this from a national perspective. I am looking at our state of Arizona. And this exploration will highlight the challenges that are faced by educators in navigating the demands of high stakes testing through a series of research articles, interviews, surveys. Participants of the interviews and surveys not only share their personal experiences, but they also include their bias as well. My presentation also looks at what inspired me to re you know, research and education, like why am I so passionate about standardized assessments and education. It also briefly covers and looks at other similar studies that have already been conducted in the past, and also the significance of my research in the world of K education, as well as I will share a little bit of my findings as well. First, I believe in you know the beginning of the early stages of the research process. So Gary D. Boma and the research process had introduced the idea of a starting point for me with beginning the early stages of the research process. After having a starting point, it is very important for me to first have a topic. So for me, my overall topic is, okay, standardized assessments. Okay, now I'm gonna narrow down my topic. What am I looking at exactly with standardized assessments? It's such a broad topic, as I just mentioned. What am I, what am I curious about with them? Am I looking at it from a student's perspective, how they impact students? Not in this case. In this case, I am curious about how standardized assessments in the state of Arizona directly impact teachers, school administrators, and school districts, which include the district officials. So I'm looking at, okay, what types of information regarding standardized assessments do I need to examine? So in this case, the top of the standardized assessments can, like I said, be too broad. I had to narrow it down, and this is where I initially found and started my research was through Boma's work, the research process. So, after I read Boma's ideas, I then looked at John W. Cresswell and his article, Research Design, Quantitative, Quantitative, and Mixed Methods Approach. And this his concept and through his readings, I learned of the idea of creating what is called a worldview. And for a while, I was kind of stuck and confused about, okay, how do I want to approach my studies? And I noticed that my perspectives and the research that I conducted is in between, between a transformative and a pragmatic worldview. What I mean by that is a transformative worldview holds that research inquiry, this is as Cresswell defines, a transformative worldview holds that research inquiry needs to be intertwined with politics and political change agenda to confront social oppression 
at whatever level it occurs. So this includes placing the importance of a study on diverse groups. In a sense, standardized assessments can be a very political topic, especially in the state of Arizona. Think of it as why are some school districts receiving more funding compared to others? Why are some schools, okay, I'm narrowing it down. Okay, I'm going from school districts to schools. Why are some schools receiving more funding in comparison to others? Like I said, this is just an example. I eventually resulted my views with that of pragmatic belief. And Cresswell defines pragmatism as not committed to any one system of philosophy of reality. This applies to mixed methods research. And so I'm going to go into this. I kind of wanted to combine with my research both examples of quantitative and qualitative data to, to have a stronger argument, to uh, have a stronger you know, point. Uh, Cresswell introduced this idea of mixed methods to me. And so he defined the mixed methods approach as collecting both quantitative and qualitative data while integrating the forms of data and using district distinct, not district, sorry, distinct designs that may involve philosophical assumptions and theoretical frameworks. So as I included, I am mentioning research from other articles that are similar to studies that have been already made. I am including results from a survey that was distributed. And I'm also including responses from interviews that I have conducted. Now, here are some similar studies on standardized assessments that have already been made. So many studies reflect the impacts of standardized assessments on studies, but there are very few that reveal directly or provide much information on how educators, administrators, and school districts are affected. Monty D. Neal and Joan J. Medina's article, Standardized Testing Harmful to Educational Health, mostly examines and looks at how students are impacted by standardized assessments, but they also, within the research, include sections that show perspectives of education and standardized assessments on school teachers and also school administrators. There is also Brian A. Jacob and Lars Lefgren in their article, Can Principals Identify Effective Teachers? Evidence on Subjective Performance Evaluation at Education, and Education, sorry. They mention, both Jacob and Lefgren mentioned how administrators can identify teachers who produce the largest and smallest achievement gains, standardized achievement gains. So what they do is they look at how students perform on standardized assessments, and then they use the data from you know, how students perform to evaluate and assess the teacher's performance. Now, why is it important that we study the impacts of standardized assessments on educators, administrators, and school districts? For, well, I'll tell you why. So I have been in the field of education since 2016. Personally, I've taught both middle and high school English language arts. Now I am a currently a curriculum service provider. I facilitate each week professional developments, also known as PDs, and I facilitate professional learning communities, PLCs, and I coach and I mentor teachers. I'm also currently employed at what's considered a Title I school. And this year, the school I'm at has a rating of a D letter grade. Our goal is next year, hopefully, that we'll be at a C and, have, and demonstrate some growth. Now, educators that I work with have expressed concerns about their evaluations based on their student performance to me. And it's often a common topic, especially the last couple of months, especially since educators just finished, you know, my colleagues just finished their evaluations, they're analyzing their, their performance, 
so far this year. And so often assessments have been brought up, the benchmarks. We have quarterly benchmarks here in the district that I work for. And benchmarks assess and measure students per quarter. They look at standards. So there are a set of standards that need to be taught each quarter and the teacher, we usually tell our teachers, okay, we want you to see these standards are over here. We want you to pick a couple of these standards to heavily emphasize and heavily focus on with the lessons and content that you teach. We have highly leveraged standards, the standards, those are called the highly leveraged standards. And then you have the supporting standards, which are the standards that should be constantly taught in the background, no matter what. And so that's what the benchmarks test. They go off of the standards that are being taught each quarter. And that is the way of them assessing. That's how they differ from the state assessment, standardized assessment, which transferred from being the AIMS test to the AZ Merit, which is now considered ASA, the AASA. And so schools, as I mentioned, the letter grade is heavily tied to the state standardized assessment. And so schools that receive a D or an F, they tend to receive less funding and, compare and resources in comparison to other schools that perform better. Now, the purpose of the study. My study is designed to explore standardized assessments and how they impact teachers, administrators, and school districts across the state of Arizona. I have already previously mentioned that, and this is my focus. This is the importance of it. I'm looking at Arizona. I'm not examining Mississippi. I'm not examining California. I'm looking at our state right here. The types of questions that are addressed throughout my research. I have a set of questions, for example, should school funding be tied to assessments? Have standardized assessments and benchmarks affected you as a professional or your classroom instruction? In what ways have you been directly impacted by standardized assessments and benchmarks? What are your thoughts on standardized assessments? So these are the types of questions that survey participants and individuals that I have interviewed have answered throughout this study. So going back to some of Cresswell's ideas, I am approaching this research and study by applying a mixed methods approach. This applies to both quantitative and qualitative data. After I began the process of, you know, narrowing my, my topic, since I started, it was too broad. I then began the process by finding research articles. I wanted to see if there were any similar studies already. So I searched through Google Scholar and JSTOR using the following categories to see if I can find any similar studies. I searched under impact standardized assessments on teachers, and then I looked at standard impacts of standardized assessments on school principals, and then I typed in, you know, search engines, impacts of standardized assessments on school districts. The articles I researched helped me form questions. So after reading through these multiple articles, I was like, huh, some of these. So the readings helped me develop and begin to form questions that I'm going to use towards the interviews. But before I wanted to you, you know, go to interviews, I wanted to see if there were any other, you know, search engines, scholarly search en engines that I could use because I've only used JSTOR and Google Scholar primarily in the past for my research. So then I reached out to Northern Arizona's University's library, Klein Library, and I spoke with Brittany Blanchard, and she is one of the librarians, and she helped me utilize more resources, and that's where I discovered Eric Education Literature, also known as EBSCO, 
And I found articles such as The Role of Students Assessment and Curriculum by George J. Posner and David S. Knight. And in their article, are high poverty school districts disproportionately impacted by funding cuts? That article helped me a great deal with also creating questions, you know, to go and approach my, the people I interview, my colleagues that I interview. Interviews are a great way to gather narrative analysis from educators based on their experiences. So throughout my experience interviewing for my research, many of my the teachers that I interviewed and school administrators that I interviewed shared samples of stories and some of, some of the experiences they have gone through and about standardized assessments and also their personal bias. I have started conducting interviews since September of 2023. I have, right now, I have a total of five interviews from September 2023 up until February of 2024. And three of them were from teachers, general education teachers, and two interviews came from school administrators. Now, I always love to get interviews. Why? Because they, they help share, you know, expertise, provide feedback, gain insight. And also interviews can help me develop questions to produce, you know, surveys to gain more data. So after the interviews, I looked at, at the responses from my colleagues and I was like, wow. I have more questions. I left my interviews having more questions. <laughs> and so it's with those questions that I then did began to develop my survey. So after I studied many articles, many, I, you know, through Google Scholar, through EBSCO, through JSTOR, and after I conducted my interviews, I then created a survey because surveys are a great way to collect data from a larger you know, perspective. It's easy to get a lot more responses. And today it's easier to get responses such as I use Microsoft Office Forms. I use Microsoft to create a survey. And then I distributed the survey on January 25th, 2024, and I left the survey open for people to respond until February 6th, 2024. So I gave it almost, you know, almost, you know, gave it a little over 10 days for people to reply to. And there are 50 respondents at the time, which is great. I had... Actually, I had people participate. I shared the link to the URL link to multiple educators. So I have responses for my survey from Tucson Unified School District, Sarita School District, and Marana Unified School District. And one person responded from Phoenix Union School District up in Phoenix, which is great. It was interesting to see the results from the survey. I'm going to show a couple of examples of some of the questions and also some of the results that were produced from the survey. So when I asked my participants, have standardized assessments and benchmarks affected you as a professional or your classroom instruction? Out of 50 respondents, 84% of them responded by saying yes while 16% responded by saying, not at all. So after I had the yes, no question of if ed educators have been impacted by standardized assessments, I want to find out how, like reasons why they are impacted. And so this led me into, based off the results from interviews and also articles, I said, if yes, in what ways have you been impacted? 
directly by standardized assessments. Out of 50 participants, there has been 64% that listed all of the above. So they feel like, hey, my self-esteem has been impacted, my reputation as an educator, my curriculum has been, been affected, my instruction has been affected, there has been either an increase or a decrease of incentives for you know, the performance of standardized assessments or from their students. And then the second highest was 13%, and that was instruction. Self-esteem was third, so 11% of educators only believe that only their self-esteem and reputation has been affected. Curriculum was 7%. And 4% is the increased decrease of incentives. Now, sh another question I had on the survey was, should school funding be tied to assessments? From the survey, 86% responded with no. And then 14% responded with yes. So here's a brief image of the chart to show the responses. Following that question is, should standardized assessments and benchmark results be part of a teacher's evaluation, like their overall evaluation? When surveyed, 76% of teachers responded that benchmarks and standardized assessments should not be a part of their evaluation. However, there are 24% that believe that assessment should be part of a teacher's evaluation, which is pretty interesting to, to see. Here is a slide of examples of one of my short, you know, short responses from the survey. As I mentioned, there were two out of the 11, you know, 11 questions. So these questions were optional. I got 39 responses out of 50. So this one is expand upon your answers to questions four and five. So in what ways were you impacted or affected by standardized assessments? Here are a couple of the responses. Mind you, this is anonymous. You know, I wanted my educators to be feel comfortable sharing considering my position. I am viewed as a support staff, and sometimes they jokingly call me administrators. So I, I want them to feel comfortable sharing their responses. That's why I left it to be anonymous rather than leave their name or have their name be tied to this survey. So here are examples of the responses. If my students do not do well, there is a significant pressure to alter my instruction and teach to the test, rather than focus on students' mastery of standards and concepts. Another one is, test measure how good you are at taking tests, not knowledge. Students often feel inadequate and teachers feel punished for something that is largely not up to them. I feel like I teach to the test and not to what my students actually need. I feel that my job and security and balance are in balance for my student based on my students' scores. So after I created the survey and interviewed participants, I got the idea of okay, how are we going to have these conversations with administrators? school district officials and teachers all in the same room like what can we do to open up these discussions this is when i decided to create the game crisis and curriculum the testing chronicles this is based off of dungeons and dragons so which is a role playing in some cases it can be a tabletop game and for anyone who's not familiar with dungeons and dragons it's okay i you know, all you do is you create a character that has different types of traits. And in case of Dungeons and Dragons, you could be like an orc, you could be a human, you could be an elf. Well, I want this to be related to the field of education and testing. So this is when I created 
what I call crisis and curriculum, the, te the testing chronicles, which is abbreviated CCTTC. It is a tabletop role playing game to get educators, administrators, and school district officials to begin having discussions related to standardized assessments and talk about the inequalities that are created due to standardized assessments. It is designed to be solution focused. It began to have conversations related to finding solutions for ensuring that everyone is successful and also that they feel heard when it comes to discussing testing strategies. This game will benefit everyone in the field of education. So instead of playing an orc or a half elf or an elf, and the game that I created, the Chronicles, Crisis and Curriculum, the Testing Chronicles, you get to play the exhausted teacher if you choose to. And of course, here's a description of the character. I even created like little traits that the character could have because like in the field of Dungeons and Dragons, you have charisma, intelligence, these are all traits that make a character a character. And so I just wanted to create a, cre create a quick little blurb about the exhausted teacher. So teachers, if you choose to play the teacher, teachers lead and guide their classrooms at public or private schools. They can help their students understand academic information. On average, they work between 50 to 60 hour weeks while they develop curriculum and create worksheets and lesson plans. And if you do not feel like playing the exhausted teacher, you have the option to play as the busy district official. I have this as a very general term, by the way. A very busy district official can include a district superintendent, or you could decide if you're assistant superintendent, Human Resources, Title I Department, Assessment and Evaluation, and the list goes on. This allows you to be a little bit creative. Often these officials are not directly seen at a school site, but in this case, with some of our stories, they are visiting the school for whatever reason. They could be observing. And if you decide you do not want to play a teacher, an exhausted teacher, or a busy district official, you could choose to play as the annoyed and probably tired principal. Now, school principals oversee the entire school. They help oversee and develop academic goals and ensure that their faculty has the necessary resources. Principals ensure that academic policies and curricula are being followed. They also can enforce discipline whenever necessary. They meet with students' families and students, and they develop and track benchmarks for measuring success. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. Now, here is a game. Crisis and curriculum creates and facilitates discussions. Now, mind you, Dungeons and Dragons has what is called the Dungeon Master which I should have added at the very beginning when I started discussing this, but I left this for a reason. Dungeon Masters are the ones that help drive the story. They help get it going, get it started. So in this case, in Crisis and Curriculum, the Testing Chronicles, I call the Dungeon Master, known as the DM, I call him as the Educational Facilitator. So an Educational Facilitator has to have at least an idea of a type of story in their mind of how they're going to get the conversation started with their players. So of course, materials that you need, by the way, to ensure a successful game is you need to have a 10-sided dice. You need to have also chosen the, one of the characters that you would like to play. And you also need to make sure that, you know, there's this is optional but you also have a map. Now this is up to the educational facilitator if they decide to use a map or not to drive the story. Now there are little cards that I have that are prompts in case it's, you know, that the educational facilitator and the players have any discuss, you know, trouble getting started. They're called little educational prompts. So you pick up the educational prompt with a card and you read the prompt and it will say, 
a scenario to get it started. So for example, the scenario could be, you have a very annoyed principal who has a very angry expression on the face and they're coming up to you in a hurry. They would like to discuss your the evaluation performance based off of your students' performance on the standardized assessment. Now roll a d10, which is a dice. Oh, you got one through five. Okay, if you got one through five, that means that your kids tanked and bombed the overall assessment. How are you going to approach this discussion? What are some strategies that you are going to have? If you roll six or 10, oh wow, your kids did great. They rocked it. Now, what were some of your strategies that you used to make sure that your kids were successful this year? That's just an example. All discussions are to be solution-based. So I intend to introduce this game Crisis and Curriculum, the Testing Chronicles, either at through workshops or introduce it at professional development, or I could even start through my PLC since they're smaller groups, usually of eight people tops. That's a great way to get it started. I might just start doing that. Finally, conclusion, while standardized assessments are intended to measure student proficiency, and also be used to guide pra instructional practices, these tests often feel create a complex web of pressures and challenges. Teachers themselves find themselves having the difficult challenge to navigate, navigate through balance between preparing their students for exams and also trying to create a holistic learning experience for them. School administrators find themselves facing the daunting tasks of evaluating and interpreting data to make and create informed decisions and practices amongst their school sites. Overall, conversations need to be met and to be had to make sure that they are solution focused to ensure that everyone, that educators, school principals, school district officials, that everyone come together that we are able to have these discussions to be sure that our our school schools are successful. Not just that, not just that, that they feel heard, but also overall in the end, it's everyone, including the students, are successful in the end. Now, in the future, very near future, this is example of my portfolio. I intend to continue on with my education, going through the PhD doctoral route. I also intend on becoming an English or writing professor. And here is a link for my, to access my online portfolio. It has an example of my resume and also has samples of my writing and my work that I've completed throughout the years. So if you want to, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. And here is my works cited page, which of all the sources that I've included are discussed within this presentation. Thank you. I hope you have a wonderful day.